Yeah, welcome everybody to the community meeting for KCP today, September 20th. And we have the agenda here in front of us, issue 2035. If you have topics, please add them. So we are pretty thin today um, for the moment. So there's plenty of space and time today, I think. Um, yeah, as usual, we have the issue hygiene we do at the end. I added one topic, uh, just a, a link to the document uh, started. So we just started a discussion about KCPIO, which we acquired uh, a few weeks ago. So we have to come up with content. And this document is basically the attempt to collect. Um, that's the first suggestion, what we could have there. And um, basically, it pretty much resembles what we have in the readme already maybe minus um tmc so tmc is something of course you want to have in some way but we decided to um, eventually separate that into its own service so maybe its own repository so when we write up the pitch of kcp itself like kcp core it shouldn't be at the top so that's the result here but I suggest um, if you have comments, ideas, better ideas about wording, or you want to uh, contribute some nice drawings or something like that, yeah, please join this effort. That's all I wanted to say about that. All right, so another topic, two even showed up, awesome. So Steve logging update and key fund update. Yeah, just uh, two super quick notes. Um, so we're still very slowly making progress on structured logs. I uh, I do want everyone just to try uh, changing like one file, a couple of functions over, get into the headspace of attaching logs, et cetera. Um, it's a useful exercise. Um, and then for the key funks, uh, this should be a complete no up to everyone generally, but um, in the process of moving everything over to uh, like strongly typed listers and informers that require you to put in a cluster when you need one. Um, part of that has been uh, creating these cluster aware key functions splitters. The format is slightly different from the stuff that we had in the, uh, the cube fork. Um, if you're doing like a raw get by key, you'll need to format the key manually. So if you look at, uh, uh, geez, probably, yeah, uh, that fourth commit, format the index key manually. There's, you know, if you're writing new code, let's try to not make assumptions about what is inside of strings. Um, and then break them up and, and use them as necessary. But this should have been a no up for everyone. So yeah, just as pump them. Is there a way to have a verify command which finds those cases or is it too complicated? Uh, yeah, we have a suite of end to end tests that will fail because you're not going to get anything from your indexer. <laughs> okay. And I, I do hope that this will be resolved like fairly shortly. Any comments, questions? All right, so much about updates, logging key funks. Paul, you want to talk about milestones, I guess. Yep, just a friendly reminder that we're hoping to hit code complete next Friday on the current milestone. Our last milestone closed on time, so we've got a lot to live up to this time. So let us know if you have any risks on things landing for the topics you're working on. For the next milestone planning, you've got a link to the work packages document. We'll add a section there for the next milestone. I, I think we've got a lot of long running topics right now that will continue. But if you do have new items that you'd like to work on and own or own R&D for, um, you can list them out in there. 
Thank you. Okay, any other topics before we jump to the boring part or issues? All right, so this is going to be a short meet meeting today. So we have not many bugs, uh, eight of them, which are new. So let's go through them one by one. First one is about preconditions failed, UID and precondition. And I guess this non is a surprising thing, Steve. You can comment on that. I think this is just a like, code bug where we put the precondition into one half of the patch generator and not the other half. Okay. So this is urgent. What are the consequences? Uh, <laughs> doesn't seem to make any trouble. Um, I don't know. It doesn't seem to have any downstream effects. I'm not really sure. UID and precondition. I'm not even sure what it means. Fair to think. So the patch is income to get right, but the patch doesn't work by that reason, does it? Yeah. yeah. Did the test fail or pass? Everything passes. It's just all Okay. Yeah, I think it needs investigation. Either it's a problem and our test isn't catching it, or it's not a problem, but we should fix it. I mean, of course, yeah. So backlog for sure. Uh, if anybody wants to pick it and look into it, just uh, self-assign. Uh, so, right. so, uh, so I think our agreement was we just put backlog here, right? That's what we yeah. discussed last time. Okay. Yeah, instead of TBD. Okay. And I'll go through and clear out all the TBDs and get them in the right spot. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. Okay, so flake test integration, multiple connections. It's in the tunneler code. Steve, you just saw that, or do you have any insight? Nope, I just saw it. And maybe this is a, a general comment. Um, for flake hygiene, it probably is useful to log these. Yes. And then we can try to understand how often they happen. People can link to them when okay. they retest. Is there any infrastructure we can use for these kind of information, statistics about flakes? So there's the... You got the test. There's Andy test grid, which doesn't really give you what you're asking for. Like you can, you can go into test grid and you can have it filter and only show failed tests, but there may be tests that show up there that failed because somebody was working on a PR and you know the, they messed up, up something and broke it. Uh, so you really would want to look at failed tests against like main periodics or post submits. We have periodics, but not post submits. The thing you're really looking for is the triage tool that the uh, CNCF has for Kubernetes and other things, but that requires putting a bunch of data into BigQuery, which we maybe could do, but would require some investigation. Yeah, I don't remember what the rules are about who can put stuff into BigQuery and who can't. I think previously, because uh, that sort of stuff didn't get open sourced. It was fairly permissive with everyone being in the same data set, but we'd probably just ask SIG testing. Okay. I was, did a little bit of research. I think they, I can't remember if they have multiple data sets or not, but like they moved to open infra as opposed to like private that. accounts and things. But yeah, it, it would need investigation um, to do that. So it's not super urgent, right? My impression is when we have flakes, but it's not so bad that it's gotten a lot better. It. Yeah, I mean, I would say like if you are writing a PR and you find yourself needing to comment slash retest, the first thing you should do is check to see is there already a bug report filed for whatever test is failing? Did I introduce the failure in my PR? And if you don't think that your PR introduced the failure and there is no bug report for it, add a bug for it. Uh, don't just hit retest over and over again. Yeah. So I went to add cool. these yeah, items to the tracker and they're already there for yeah. me. <laughs> June 16th, so 
little bit. We're on test grid already. Oh, Andy, I'll okay. leave the clicking to you. OK. So I left it in backlog. Somebody should investigate. We have to pick up this work anyway, because it's just one half of pot uh, logs and pot exec. So I think we'll come back to that when it's happening off more often, at least. Next one, something about shared compute. When placements are deleted, re-edit back. I do not see deployment going from one to zero. Did anybody look into that? Not yet. I would put this on presumably TMC, and yeah, yeah. David and team should look at it. So I put it on David when he's back. And backlog. Next one. Oh, yeah, this one. I think this is fixed. It needs a, it's going to need a logical cluster. Uh, no, I just, it, just it'll need a new tag thing. and a bump. Yeah. Um, there was an update at the very bottom about preceding numbers. I don't know if you saw that, Andy. No, well. I have like 40 GitHub notifications I haven't read yet. Yeah, I figured. Just so that we didn't lose it in here. There was some further question. Uh, yeah, we don't want to allow them, I think. I think we can't even allow them, right? Because those are DNS segments or something like that. Um, it's, yeah, it's got to be a valid DNS subdomain. So if. Isn't the namespace the same, though? Yeah. I don't remember. Um, that error is coming from our YAML patch. So if we need to change it because it's OK to have a leading number, we can. But it, it was at least it was intentional to not allow them. So if namespaces do, uh, allow them, yeah, OK, that's nice. I didn't know that. I guess, Andy, do you want to own this, or do we know like what is the actual source of truth for what should be allowed, and then anyone can sort of fan out in all the places we need it? Um, so I would, I would ask, is it a true statement that workspace names need to be DNS subdomains? Because that's what we currently have. Is that what we want? I mean, this is used nearly everywhere. Yeah. And if so, I remember, no, 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 wait. I think there is one, one um, thing, and we had it in Secret Permissionary um, some months ago. Um, DNS, uh, sorry, CRD or CR names actually, they are more constrained than native type uh, names. And I, I think I remember it was about DNS segment. And there was not a real strong reason, just that maybe people use CR names in DNS context and it's better to do that, something like that. So hand waving, but we cannot change it. That is my memory. I might be wrong, but I think it's a. CID restriction. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure that this error is coming from our YAML patch, not from the Yeah, CRD. because because we follow that. So it might be just, this, I mean, it's aligned with CR names. No, CR names are governed by built-in code to Kubernetes that checks that they're valid DNS subdomains or whatever. We are, I think, a little bit more restrictive. Okay. So we can we can follow up in comments. Uh, if, yeah, yeah, uh, for sure. I will get around to it here. Okay. Can <laughs> I assign to you then? Yeah. So Mark is happy that somebody is replying. All right, so she clusters, back, backlog. OK, next one. This was that projection oh, yeah. one. Yeah, we, we talked about that today. It's a common problem people face who are building APIs that you want to have objects, not types, but real objects shared uh, among workspaces. And we had a lot of discussion around projections. Maybe projections should be a generic API. Um, I don't think this is a good solution. It's a solution for, for that use case here, projections are per group resource, basically like aggregation is used in Cube. 
hopefully safe in a safe way that it doesn't take down the system, but um, basically they are like aggregation. The question here is about single objects or some limited number of objects being shared and maybe even yeah, be co-located with objects which are actually in the workspace. So collisions are a topic. Yeah, I think and, this one needs a design because it yeah. involves replication as soon as exactly. you're doing cross workspace stuff. That's that's my answer here. It will be a replication problem of some sort. And yes, we should have an API probably for that. Yeah. So, so anybody, I mean, it's fine to put it in the backlog, but it's uh Yeah, it's I don't know if we need a label that's like needs design or something. I mean it depends on priority. If they need it for their work, then we have to talk. Right. Otherwise, it's just in the backlog. Also, probably less work to put labels on the ones that don't need design. Yeah, just because it needs a design is not. Sure of this. We can put it here, but um, doesn't mean that people work on it. True. So this is. I'm not even sure what it is. Uh, it doesn't really. But anyway, so um, backlog. So. Quick, if you're here um, and you desperately need that, we have to talk. Otherwise, it's just backlog. All right. Um, provide access to different APIs on the same. Oh, yeah. Um, Steve, do you want to summarize what is Frederick here? Uh, yes, I'm here. Right, so the, the idea was um, so that we, we have uh, two sets of user, administrator, and the end user. And we would like uh, uh, to have the administrator uh, able to sync uh, additional resources compared to what uh, uh, the end user can do. So today, what actually stops you from having two sync targets that point to the same underlying uh, physical cluster? Uh, yeah, nothing. I wanted to uh, make sure that he, it is a valid approach to, to do that. Yes, sure. uh, that's valid. Yeah, so the, the only thing, and we, we discussed that uh, earlier, is that uh, um, For yeah. the resources that are available to the end user, we wouldn't want something like deployment, which is part of uh, the resources that always get uh, synced. Uh, at least well, what is generated by, by the, the sync uh, plugin. Yep, and so the work that's undergoing right now should fix that. Um, so you'll be able to opt into whatever resources you need yeah. on that particular sync target. And then having to point to the same underlying cluster seems like a totally reasonable uh, thing to do. Oh, that sounds good. <laughs> All right, so what should we do here? Um, basically, there's something missing, I commented, but we are near, right? One PR is missing and config map secret service account um, thinking that it's selective. Should we keep that open or should we, I don't know, about that topic, there is already an uh, issue created, I would say. Okay. Do you know the number? No. I I'd say it if, it's, if it's useful to Frederic to have this open, just this, you know, we can comment in here when it's done and confirm that it yeah. actually works. But otherwise, yeah. we can close it. Joachim, can you, can you find the number and paste it here? Yeah. and? Maybe uh, Jojan's um, PR we can also link when it's clear. Okay. okay. So I assigned to you, but when you have done that, just uh, unassign if you like. That's one time multicluster. And it's kind of in progress. Uh, not really, I'm not sure. Doesn't really matter. Okay. Yeah, this was a discussion uh, some minutes before the meeting. Mike was bringing up the question about all those static endpoints we have in, in Cube. 
and there are more than that um, in the discussion is like um, basically we identified those which are no brainers and we talked about that before because I think Argo CD was needing ready that or something like that so we should probably map them into workspaces so just into the endpoint of one workspace and map them I mean encode them project them on the public top level endpoint this is easy um yeah because it's an issue help wanted if anybody wants to look into that it's probably not very hard but you see the i mean the handler chain um, and we need another filter there so that's probably what must be done there are more endpoints especially open api which we talked about maybe last time i don't remember um we want it it's not static like it's it's not uniform over all workspaces so we have to do computation in some sense. And I think so, uh, yeah, basically the theory R was, um, yes, we want it, but it's not trivial to do it, right? Anyway, so it's still open. And the other one, metrics, we discussed a little bit more. Um, metrics which are workspace labeled are not possible. So we had this discussion before that a workspace label is unbounded, uh, yeah. Um, explodes the cardinality of metrics we have. So we cannot do that. We can have aggregated uh, metrics over all workspaces. That's what we have today. And the question what uh, Mike was basically asking, can we have metrics in a workspace just with those um, counts of that workspace and without any workspace label because it's just one workspace and what I understood, and Sagos, if he's here, he can correct me. This is something we can do because we will not query that endpoint for every workspace, but a user can if they want to. So if a user wants to connect their own observer, uh, their Prometheus instance and um, Kafana and everything, they can do that. That's something so, we could uh, add. Yeah. Perhaps first off, you're going beyond the scope of what's on the screen, so maybe we need another issue or two. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we should, we should. Um, oh, maybe we the, have, I think metrics is needed. Metrics, and there's also APF, uh, API Priority of Fairness has a debug endpoint that is, uh, needs to be uh, workspace or logical cluster specific. I see. Yeah. yeah for, um, and easier, that's, I guess. that'll be a relatively easy one. I think the mm -hmm. metrics has an additional difficulty, which is that the upstream code. Uh, Doesn't support that. Right, it doesn't have uh, uh, any. It, it doesn't wrap up the metric collection uh, behind an interface that we can instantiate per uh, workspace. So there's going to be a real code base problem. Yeah, if we if we have the context, we can get the cluster, and with that, we should be able to to do that with not too many changes. Well, anyway, I think a couple more issues are needed here. Yeah, for sure. So if you if you can create a metrics one, and maybe PNF I'll, I'll, as well. All right, I'll create those two, sure. Makes sense. All right, so much uh, about that, Mike. Any Anything I forgot? You had some, um, there are some things around OpenID or so, right? Well, I'm not right. even sure what it means when we have those. So you said there were already issues, or was that a question? No, not for them. That's a question. So I guess that's another issue to open then. Yeah, yeah. If 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 you can explain why we want them, or maybe just answer as we don't, um, could also be. Uh, I'll, I'll start by just asking the question. Uh, yeah. Clearly, it's, it's a question that needs to be asked. Right, those are currently part of what a user can do to an API server. So it's a question. Yes. And there are two more. There are locks, which usually are disabled, to my knowledge. Or just one more, just locks. That's all, I think. Then we have talked about all of them. Yeah, but create issues, and we can discuss in there. That's fine. All right, thank you. Yeah, help wanted. If you want to uh, look deep into the API server, but have something feasible, this one is certainly something like that. Okay, I 
block and yeah, server area, that's fine. And the last one, Andy? Um, yeah, I don't think there's much explanation needed. <laughs> Yeah, it was just forgotten to disable. For testing, it makes sense, but now we don't need that. Okay, and with that. Will disabling that makes that main tag will disappear from the images? What was that? Like, if you remove this one, the image will tag main will disappear. It will, will not be updated anymore. No, this doesn't build images. Ah, OK. Sorry. It's really just to build uh, um, QCuttle and other okay, zips or target sets, what we have there, attached to releases. All right, with that, we are empty. Nearly half an hour. And there's no new topic, but last chance. We have still 30 minutes if you have something. And let's call it a short meeting today, half an hour back for everybody. Thank you. See you next time. Thanks.